Uh, my name is Brooke from Brooke and Jubal in the Morning on the radio station moving 92.5. For those that listen, for those that don't, you're probably smarter than the rest of us, so it's fine. Um, and I got to say, I have been looking forward to this all week, especially this week. It's been a hard week for everybody. I know that, and it makes me teary just even thinking about it. And to be in a room filled with hope and to be in a room filled with people who are making moves to make a difference in the world, I'm talking about you guys, um, really has been the highlight for me all week. And I, I really have been looking forward to this year's lunch more than any other lunch that I've gotten to be a part of, especially here in Tacoma. You guys have such a community and such an energy and it's really unmatched anywhere in the Puget Sound. So give yourselves a round of applause for being here and for putting out some good stuff into the world. That's what we need. Now, with all that top of mind, I would like, uh, of course, again, to thank you all for joining us in this commitment to help put an end to breast cancer. Many of us have had experiences with breast cancer that are way too close to home. I know we all agree that no one should ever have to worry about losing someone they love to this disease. But there is hope through Komen Puget Sound, we're funding grants to help people who need services and cutting edge research against breast cancer. It's why we're all here, it's pretty amazing stuff and I want you to join me and Komen Puget Sound in recognizing the great sponsors who made this gorgeous, gorgeous luncheon possible today. Our presenting sponsor, Fred Meyer. Yeah, absolutely. Our platinum sponsor, CHI Franciscan Health. Gold sponsors, Harborstone Credit Union and the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe. Silver sponsors, Carol Mygard Breast Center, Multicare Health System, Northwest Medical Specialties, and TRA Medical Imaging. You can find a full list of the sponsors in your lovely programs and an extra shout out to our wonderful longtime Wonderful again, presenting sponsor, Fred Meyer. Um, now, along with great sponsors, putting on this event each year, as you can probably imagine, takes a lot of volunteer power. And we have the best, most dedicated volunteers out there. These guys definitely deserve a round of applause. I think this is the most beautiful luncheon. I mean, just even walking in, uh, the, the tables set up out there, the sponsors set up, and everyone who put in effort to this year's Lunch for the cure, cure is really an amazing person, and thank you so much. And leading this year's Lunch for the Cure committee as chairs are Tracy Jones and Gina Nyland. Yeah, Tracy and Gina. Where are you, ladies? Get on up here. Uh, give it up, give it up, yeah, give it up, why not? I was trying to say thank you and give it up at the same time, but absolutely, these two ladies have worked tires, tirelessly. Another hard word for me. I think that I needed one more cup of coffee before I came up here uh, for this year's Lunch for the Cure, and one more time, I would like one round of applause for them. Thank you all. <laughs> now let's have your great committee stand and be recognized. I know you guys' hands are going to hurt after all this clapping. Everyone who's on the committee, stand to be recognized. I know you may not like it. Yes, you deserve a little attention, too. There it is. Thank you. Another reason we're all here today is to celebrate the breast cancer survivors and patients among us. Could I ask everyone here who is a breast cancer patient or a survivor to stand? Please remain standing, don't sit down yet. I know that lunch is delicious. We have a scarf for each of you. And you really are, you are the heart of the Komen mission. You're the reason we're here. And we're so grateful for your strength today. I think it gives everyone else in this room strength as well. So we appreciate and love each of you. If you haven't got a scarf, you can't sit. You know, we got to stand awkwardly for a little while. It's okay, people will stare. It's only the people at your table, so you can stare back at them once you sit down. I mean, that only seems fair. 
Is anyone else fighting for a piece of chocolate cake over their strawberry cheesecake? I'm, t I'm taking out Christy later. She took the chocolate chair. Okay, I've been told by the committee chairs since they're running everything that they can get your scarves later and you can sit down right now. They'll remember who you are, they promise. And if you didn't get your scarf, just go and see either Gina or Tracy. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. I know you've been checking out the beautiful centerpieces at your table. Do you see those lovely glass bowls? In each centerpiece, you'll see an elegant glown glass bowl created by our own local glass art studio, Area 253 Glass Blowing. Now, you can purchase one of those today for just $40. And if you don't see one that you like on the table, they have plenty more in the lobby. Or if the two that are on your table get purchased, there's one for everybody if you all want one. And they're a great value for these beautiful hand-blown pieces. They'd make wonderful presents, great for your own house, and what they represent is even greater. So you'll find uh, purchase information in the white frames at your table if you're curious. Those white frames have all your purchase information in them. And then before we take a short lunch break, we are going to have one last call for raffle ticket sales. Where are my raffle sellers? Who's got raffle tickets to sell out there? We do. Over there. There they are. Now, you want to flag down one of these lovely volunteers if you want to enter for a chance to win either of two prizes. We got awesome prizes. We got uh, 50,000 American Airline miles and a World Mark vacation package. You could win one of those today. Or you could win two club section tickets for the Seattle Seahawks home game against the LA Rams. Do I have any Seahawks fans out there? All right, every Seahawk fan who just clapped has to buy a raffle ticket. I didn't tell you that before you cheered, gotcha. So flag down these lovely raffle ticket ladies. Tickets are $50 a piece. Remember, this does go, uh, you know, as a tax write-off. So you could be going to a Seahawks game for a good cause. I'm just saying. And we're going to be pulling the winning tickets when we return in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to let you guys enjoy your lunch. I'll let you stop clapping for just a moment. And then I'm going to expect more when I get back. So uh, eat up and buy some raffle tickets. Thank you all. Who's first time at the Tacoma Puget Sound Lunch for the Cure? Oh, first timers. I like that. Are you having a lovely uh, evening or evening, afternoon? Yeah, good lunch, right? Great, w great reason to get out of work. Good reason to meet new friends. And who uh, has been here the last, let's say, five years? Oh, gosh, you've been stuck with me for a while, haven't you? Don't tell everybody else, but I'll probably be back next year, whether you like it or not. They actually are going to pick a new MC, and I'm just going to commandeer the mic next year. You guys are stuck with me forever. Sorry about that. Coleman Puget Sound just can't get rid of me, whether they want to or not. Um, no, I love this organization. I, I feel really lucky to, to be part of it. I, I love working with David and Christy so much. I know we just recorded a really cool commercial that will be airing on Comcast. You guys should all see it. Comcast has generously donated um, their airtime. So if you see the Coleman Comcast commercial during anything you're watching, you have to stand up in your living room and applaud, okay? That's the new rule. Okay, I think we're ready for raffles. Come on up here. Tracy and Gina. Who wants to win a trip and who wants to go see the Seahawks? Okay, our first drawing is going to be for the 50,000 American Airlines miles, the vacation trip with, world, with a world mark package. Uh, and those are the red tickets. Now, if this is your number, I just want you to stand up and wave your arms really a lot and let us know you're here and you're excited. You don't have to come up to the stage. 020-300. Oh, so many. Oh. 300. Yay! Stand up. Who was it? Oh, that's so exciting. Everyone become friends with her. She's got a vacation. She wants to take you on. Thank you for the American Airlines. And now for the Seahawks games, you're going to the LA Rams home game. Oh, appropriately blue tickets. Oh, this one is 
eight. <laughs> three, zero eight three. Did I hear some? Yeah! Oh, look at that. Who are you taking at the table? You get two Seahawks tickets. You get two Seahawks tickets. Are you taking someone that you're with today? Or do you have to let them all down gently over there? Okay. Okay, I like that. Uh, big congratulations to our raffle prize winners. Of course, that money going to Puget Sound Komen, which is awesome. And thanks to everyone who took part. It was almost your day, but you did th something for a good cause, which is even better. And say, and now, oh wait. Oh, I lied. I didn't mean to lie to you all. There's only two glass poles, bowls per table. I know. Are you sure? Oh, she's sure. But you could go around to another table, and when they're not looking, take it. Can you do that? Is that allowed? Okay. If there's some left on other tables, just grab them as you go out, okay? Sorry. Gosh. They're beautiful. What can I say? Everybody wants one. Uh, and now I am pleased to introduce the executive director of Coleman Puget Sound, David Richard. He looks so good in pink, doesn't he? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? All right. So, um, you know, I know that you guys know who Brooke and Jubal are and that she emcees our event for us every year, but I don't know if you know that they are a big part of fundraising for Race the Cure. Their station always does a team, and um, they've been supporting us for many, many years. So um, thank you, Brooke, and thank you to 92.5. So let's give them a round of applause again. <laughs> we also uh, have in the audience today um, two of our Coleman Puget Sound board members, Amy Singh and Kim Albright, would you two ladies please stand up? I would like everyone to give you a round of applause. <laughs> and then we have sort of some surprise guests today from um, our national board in Dallas. Um, Kim Bohr has, is attending today. She's standing right next to, Kim, uh, to Amy, so please give her a round of applause. <laughs> We're so excited to have a national board member living in Seattle and sitting on the national board to give us a voice in Dallas. So it's very exciting and um, gosh, it's really fun to get to know Kim. So anyway, so um, you know, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? We all know that. Um, and why are we still talking about this? What is the issue in the community, do you think? I know for us, for Coleman Puget Sound, um, people, we are constantly telling people about mammograms and getting screened, right? And it's true, uh, maybe all of you in this room know that, but it's not true across the board. It's not true in communities of color. It's not true in rural settings. Uh, it's not true in a lot of different pockets of the community around Puget Sound. So they might not have insurance maybe, or enough money to pay for their health program if they didn't have insurance. Um, they might not have a clinic or a public health place to go, and if they did, maybe they don't feel welcome there because they present differently or have different color of skin. And it's sad because those are the communities that carry a bigger portion of this disease. For example, if you're African American, you're twice as likely to die of breast cancer than if you were white. And so we have issues, and it's not over yet. So I think that while we are here today to support this cause, it's, tr it's important to remember that we have a long ways to go. And our, our goal, you know, the big goal is to break down those barriers and to give people access to care. Um, last year I told you that we had a bold goal. And the bold goal was that we recognize that even though we've spent over $2 billion in research over the 35 years of our existence, 40,000 women were still dying every year in this country of breast cancer. So we decided that we needed to do something about that as an organization. We needed to cut that in half in 10 years, and that's why we call it a bold goal. We've got to do something about this. So there's two ways that we're going to do it. 
One is a focus on metastatic research, right? That's the kind of disease that it leaves the breast and goes to other parts of the body. That's the kind of disease that kills you. Breast cancer staying in your breast does not kill you. So we are focused on that. Here in the Northwest, a week ago, we just did a two-day conference at Amazon focused specifically on metastatic breast cancer. And our goal is to get more research and double down on it being metastatic only. So at our conference, Komen National announced the 2018 that they were taking no applications unless they were specific to metastatic cancer. So that's really, really exciting. And I think it's um, it's it's long time in the coming for us, and I'm really proud of it. But we also we also have um, other research that's being done, and you're going to hear about that in a few minutes from Dr. Nora Dysis. She's amazing. I am so excited for her to speak today. But also we have other we have other Coleman scholars that are get, getting funded. This year we funded Dr. Ben Anderson um, at five hundred fifty thousand dollars to do research in, in more rural communities. And in the Northwest, we have a lot of those communities where women don't have access to care. So that's what his work is all about. But we also fund grantees on the ground, right? 25% of every dollar that we raise today will go into that bigger pool that's a part of that two billion that's been invested in research over the years. But 75% of the dollars stay here. And they fund mobile mammography. They fund financial assistance programs. Um, they fund patient navigators to assist women um, in the process of getting their care. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the Puget Sound. Um, and I think the important thing to remember is that why we're all here today is that we want to make it that nobody doesn't get the care that they need if they're dealing with breast cancer, right? We don't want women to have to pick between feeding their family, paying their rent, or um, you know, some other piece of the financial picture that keeps them from going. We've heard stories of women who are cutting their pills in half because they can't afford them. So we're the only organization with over 80 affiliates um, that identify these needs in our community. And I just wanted to take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about where that money goes here in the Puget Sound so that you are excited and going to be a willing and helpful partner in getting rid of this illness. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for your time. I appreciate it and give generously. Thank you very much. Thank you again, David. There are some pretty crazy stats that he throws out there. Um, now we have a special guest to welcome to the stage. We're all familiar with that routine doctor's visits for screenings, exams, and such. What if, think about this, we go to the doctor's office and get a vaccination that's so efficient, it could actually have a preventative effect against breast cancer? Coleman scholar, Dr. Nora, Dr. Nora Desis, her work is all about making that dream a reality. So please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Dr. Nora Desis. Good afternoon, and I want to start by saying thank you so much for all your support of Komen. I represent um, literally scores of investigators who your contributions are funding in their laboratories. So I was very excited when the team asked me to come and talk to you a little bit about some of our Komen funded research in trying to develop a vaccine that would prevent breast cancer by lowering breast cancer risk. So how would you do that? Um, there's been an explosion of information in the last decade about how the immune system recognizes cancer. You've seen the commercials, now people are getting cured of their cancer just by using immunotherapy. And this is because we've finally begun to recognize that cancer is capable of being recognized by the immune system. Your cancer will stimulate an immune response. And we know the cells of your immune system that we need to stimulate in order to get an immune response that will kill cancer. And those are a component of your lymphocytes part of your white blood cell count that are called T cells. And furthermore, we know 
the T cells recognize cancer when proteins expressed by the cancer are chopped up and presented as fragments to the T cells. And we found out that depending on what fragment is presented to the T cells, the T cells either generate a killer response and a lot of inflammation, or the T cells generate a suppressor response and suppress inflammation. And when you think about how your immune system works, if you didn't have cells that suppressed inflammation, every time you got a cold sore and it got all red and your immune system's working to clean up that cold sore, if there were no breaks on the immune system, you would just keep eating away, eating away, eating away until you ended up with a larger problem than just the cold sore. So the immune system always likes to default to suppression. And it's much, much easier to identify those portions of proteins that will stimulate T cells that kind of calm down inflammation. So in our group, we thought, well, we've worked for 25 years on vaccines to create a commotion in the tumor. What if we could use those cells that are much easier to generate to calm down inflammation? And funding from Komen allowed us to go down a crazy path, and I'll tell you what that was. Well, you know in adults, a lot of times, um, cancer is caused by chronic inflammation. So if you have hepatitis C, you've heard the commercials, everyone, baby boomers get tested. That's because the virus can cause chronic inflammation and that can lead to liver cancer. Or if you smoke, smoking is a carcinogen, but smoking also causes a lot of inflammation and that inflammation together with the smoking leads to lung cancer. Well, in breast cancer, there is an inflammatory state that really predisposes people to develop breast cancer and that is when you put on weight, especially when you're postmenopausal. So you can see this was a topic very near and dear to my heart. What happens when you put on weight is that you begin to change the metabolism in your fat. And suddenly, fat is seen as something dangerous to the immune system. And instead of suppressor cells that are there keeping our bodies in normal homeostasis or normal metabolism, Instead, some of those T cells that are killer T cells infiltrate the fat, they begin to change metabolism in the fat, and they set up chronic inflammation. And because metabolism in the fat has been changed, there is no turnoff signal, and the inflammation can continue and continue and continue and secrete lots of different factors that begin to cause cells to proliferate not only fat cells, but also epithelial cells that are found in our breast. And we know that women who are heavy and have hypertension and diabetes really have a much higher risk for developing breast cancer, especially when they're postmenopausal. So our group spent a lot of time studying fat, and especially inflammatory fat. And we found that there are proteins in the fat cells that become upregulated and are recognized by the immune system. So we were able to look at the protein sequences and find those fragments that can be recognized by T cells that give the turnoff signal that those people no longer can make on their own. And so we created a vaccine to quelch the inflammation that develops an inflammatory adipocytes or fat cells. And so did this work? Will it actually be something that will help people? Well, it's very easy to take a mouse and feed that mouse like a McDonald hamburger diet. And the mice develop fat that is very similar to human fat and it becomes inflamed. And when we took our vaccine that specifically stimulates those T cells that squelch inflammation and we waited till the animals got pretty heavy, we began to vaccinate them, and we found that the vaccine alone could reduce their blood glucose levels, could reduce their triglyceride levels, eliminated the inflammatory cells in their fat, and right now we have a very long experiment ongoing in animals that also are genetically predisposed to develop breast cancer to see whether we can significantly delay or prevent breast cancer 
with this um, strategy. And the animals didn't have any side effects, so that was really good. Um, so what's the future for this? The future is um, we're poised to try to go into further studies to take a look whether we can make this something that can go into clinical trials to try to reduce the risk of breast cancer in these women who have a very high risk. And we've also created collaborations due to the Komen funding to look at the blood of women who have this type of inflammatory fat to figure out what is it that actually increases the risk for breast cancer. And we hope within the next two years to have a test that may identify breast cancer risk so that we can really select women who would benefit from this vaccine. So in conclusion, our group at the UW um, Cancer Vaccine Institute could never have done this type of project that sounded kind of wacky at the beginning without the support from um, the Komen Foundation. And this is really a group that lets scientists just dream whatever they would like to do and try to make it a reality. I thank them and I thank you. Thank you. That was fascinating. Thank you so much again, Dr. Desis. Uh, really amazing work that you guys are funding today. So a round of applause for yourselves for being here and for also being people in the community who are getting this message out to others that you know and letting them know about what Komen Puget Sound is doing and how important that work is to not just our community, but the world as a whole. Now, among the mysteries we have yet to solve is why some women develop breast cancer at a very young age. Now, for them, it can be very difficult to make sense of this disease, what it will mean in their life, to their families, to their future families. Um, and I'd like to welcome someone on the stage that I have had a lovely time with already this, e this afternoon, and I feel like I know her already, and she's just a doll. Uh, please, a warm round of applause for Sarah Lane. to be here with you today. My name is Sarah Lean, and I'm a cancer survivor. To be honest, I struggled with what I was going to share with you today, which is ridiculous because the road I've been on is one for the books. So my life isn't a tragedy because I was diagnosed with cancer. My life is a miracle because I survived cancer. First things first, I'm a perfectionist. I like things a certain way, and when things get dicey, I am far from happy. I am going to go out on a limb here and assume some of you can relate to this. So when I was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer at 24 years old, my entire life shattered. Every dream I had for my life, every year I planned with my new husband, every year, every hope of being a mother was shattered. When I close my eyes, I recall that day, and still, tears just stroll down my face. I remember how scared I was that my life was over. As I was told of the aggressive nature of my cancer, the extensive and invasive forms of treatment and surgeries I was urged to start immediately, waves of disappointment and defeat consumed me. A second punch to my gut was a positive BRCA2 gene test. Now, I was raised by a woman whose determination, strength, and stubborn ways are legendary. My mother passed those incredible traits to me. So after I took time to feel the defeat and anger and fear, I took a deep breath, put on my game face, and I started down a road that would change my entire life. The months after my diagnosis were a blur. 18 weeks of brutal chemotherapy, a double mastectomy surgery, six weeks of radiation, reconstructive surgery, and final hormone blocking therapy. <sighs> Cancer took many things from me, but what it could never take away was the hope I had for my future. Knowing that chemotherapy could damage my fertility, my husband and I took a chance 
and postpone treatment to pursue advice from a fertility specialist. Two days before I started my first chemotherapy treatment, we were successful and saved our miracle embryos. Those sweet, tiny embryos gave me the strength and hope each day to continue to fight for my life and for my future. I am so excited to share with you that miracles happen and fairy tales do come true. My dream of becoming a mother came true. I wasn't able to get pregnant on my own because of the damage from treatment, but three years after my diagnosis, I was pregnant with one of my tiny, perfect embryos my daughter Audrey made me a mommy. And I had so much mommy love to give that I didn't stop there. Next, my son Jackson arrived, and finally my identical twin daughters, Charlotte and Jillian. <laughs> Our family is complete. My heart is overwhelmed by my children's incredible start at life. All of them were frozen in 2010, and my cancer journey is just as much my story as it is theirs. A terrible diagnosis in turn gave me my dream of being a mother of four children. My husband and I have survived so much, and we believe that we can withstand anything and everything. But having four children under the age of four <laughs> <laughs> and getting zero sleep has sure been testing our sanity. <laughs> if you are ever up at 2 a.m., please know and smile, because I am too. <laughs> my 20s were not exactly how I thought they would turn out, but now that I'm in my 30s, I can tell you that I am the most blessed woman in the entire world, at least I think so. I live differently because of a cancer diagnosis. I take chances, I try new things, and I make time for important people in my life, and I let things go that don't matter. Cancer changed me for the better, and I would never go back in time and change being diagnosed. I made the choice to not let cancer break me. God is good, and he's not done with me. I don't know if my experience with cancer will change your life in any way, but what I do know is that cancer changed my life in every way. I'm not going to lie to you and act like cancer doesn't leave wounds that don't heal. I didn't allow cancer to ruin my life, and I now celebrate what it has changed for me. But that doesn't change the fact that I hate cancer with every fiber of my being. It destroys lives, it takes away loved ones, and it makes you ache for someone who will never hold you again. My mother was my first friend and one of my best friends. She lived her life with determination, grace, and above all, faith. She never lost hope. She held my hand through every appointment, every hard day, and her face was always one of the first faces I saw after surgeries. My mother was diagnosed three times with breast cancer and eventually stage four metastatic breast cancer. She fought so hard to be here with us. And when I think of why I survived and she didn't, it makes me promise to live my life for the both of us. My greatest loss due to cancer was my mother, but I have also lost my grandfather and other friends to cancer. I hate cancer. And that is a huge reason why I'm here today with you. Isn't that why most of us are here? My guess is that you're sitting here because you or someone you know either has or has had cancer, and you want to be a part of making a difference. The fight against cancer bonds strang strangers in an effort to find a cure and to support those in need. We link arms and we give generously. We wear pink to raise awareness, we walk countless miles, and we are that annoying yet lovable friend asking everyone if they're up to date on their breast health. We are all united against this disease. We just heard that progress is being made and hope is on the horizon. We have the opportunity to give people a future. I know that I am forever grateful for the future that I was given back. I ask you not only as a survivor, but as someone who has lost loved ones and friends to this horrible disease, to please give generously today. I ask you to donate to Coman Puget Sound as I do. 
my reason for my support, I give and support Coleman Puget Sound in honor of my mother and my grandfather, and I give in hopes of a bright future for my daughters and for my son. Thank you for being here today and supporting this incredible cause. Whatever your reason for being here today is, let's dig our heels in together and continue to fight for a cure. With research, hope, and perseverance, we are closer to a cure each and every day. I am Sarah Lane, and I will never, never, never give up for a cure. Thank you. Oh, Sarah, thank you so much. Um, I can't believe I have to do this right after she talks. Um, so, um, I think the first time that we met was at the race and your mom had just died five days before. Thanks for coming.